for the wonderful meal. This is just a couple announcements I want to go over. Um, on April 27th at 6 p.m. at the high school is the annual FFA Farm City Dinner. Do we have any applications, Judy, for that? Back here in the back, the Farm City breakfast, or the dinner? Okay. Okay. And April 27th at the high school is Celebrate the Child. And then we, we will have information coming out to everyone uh, via email on the golf scramble that's going to be coming up in June. Our next meeting, our May meeting, we're going to have our election of our 2019-2020 officers and directors. Judy has um, a person made contact with her. He's moving to the area and is looking um, for housing. If anybody knows of any houses available or apartments, get with Judy. She has his information. I'm going to draw for the May business in the spotlight. Kelsey Johnson with Bluegrass Blue Industry. Industry. Okay. The door prize. Get your tickets out. 608-956. And the door prize has been provided by Slickback Outdoors. Anybody win it? Six oh eight nine five six. That's early. Somebody had to. Give me another one, Judy. Probably the one the first one's here. Okay. There it is. It's gone. <laughs> I want to remind everyone about the dollars for scholars back there. When you leave, if you have a dollar or, or two, just drop it in there. Um, money received is added to our budget amount to increase the scholarship award. We will have um, an announcement at the next meeting on who gets the scholarship. Do anybody else? Does anybody else have any announcements they would like to make? Anything to share? Yes. On your table, you'll see these. Andy, do you want to make that? Or John, would you like to say a few words? I can. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> uh, on your table, you're seeing where Ford Motor Company is uh, sponsoring a uh, test drive uh, program. It, it seems like everything's on the 27th of April. But if you will show up at, Ford, at more Ford and drive, test drive, a new Ranger is what I would drive if I was you on. <laughs> I would test drive that, and if you'll do that, you'll, uh, uh, Four Corner Company will give us $20 for the Boys and Girls Club, and maximum um, uh, allowed will be $300, which will be $6,000. So it's an easy way to be part of the fundraising for the Boys and Girls Club. So I know everybody's going to be real busy on Saturday, but if you can think about that, drop in and drive there, then we'll get a check for $6,000. Thank you. John. Also, we have a big stack of these on the back table here, so before you leave, you'll take a handful of them and pl uh, put them out uh, in a visible place in your place of business and just help us spread the word and get it out there to the public. Okay. Thanks, Chase. All right, now I'd like to introduce Brian Belcher, our Vice President, so he can introduce our speaker. Brian? Thanks, Shannon. All right. So, today our guest speaker is Representative Scott Lewis. He's from the 14th District, our representative here. He has survived his first season of the legislative session, so he's alive and well, so we're glad to have him here with us. Um, a few things about uh, Representative Lewis. He, uh, on the House, he standing committee, he has elections, and constitutional amendments, intergovernor, uh, intergovernmental affairs and uh, he is the vice chair. He's also in the education committee, veterans, military affairs, and public protection, and also health and family services. Some interim joint committees that he's involved with is education, state government, veterans, military affairs, um, and he is a member of the Western Kentucky Caucus and the Pro-Life Caucus. So if you will, please 
allow me to welcome Representative Lewis. Good to be here today. Um, know everybody in here. That's always a good thing when you know the audience and uh, everyone here. As you all know, this was a short session, 30-day session, and uh, it's difficult to get things done, much less than a short session. So, uh, you all read the papers, you know that our session probably is not over. It looks like that we'll be called back into session if the governor is correct uh, this time. And I'll talk a little bit about why I guess we would be going back up there. It's House Bill 358. And, uh, you know, it had to do with universities, health departments, and uh, pensions, basically. And pensions, you all know, it gets a lot of the uh, time in Frankfurt Press and so forth. And it, it is some issues that we're going to have to look at and address. But 358 basically uh, froze the contribution rates for health departments, uh, quasi-government agencies, uh, rape and crisis centers and, all, crisis centers and all of that. And that was the good part of the bill. Okay, so... When that bill came to the House, I originally voted for that bill because it didn't include some of the stuff that after we sent it to the Senate come back to us. But uh, when we got back from the Senate, uh, let's just use our local health department as, a, as an example. If the health department wanted opted out, they would still have the liability to pay to the pension system over a 30-year period. But during that interim of the 30 years, if they were ever late on a payment, anybody that was contributing into the retirement system employees would automatically be kicked out of that retirement system into another one. So say we had a 28-year employee of the health department and the health department was late on their payment, that automatically would put them into a DC plan to find contribution instead of the retirement plan that they had. So I really feel like on this case the governor was right. I think that was the legal part of it and uh, I was one of uh, I guess three Republicans that voted against that bill for that reason. It wasn't that we didn't want to help the universities and the, and the health departments on the contribution rates, but I really felt like that it was doing a disservice to our employees. And uh, so I voted against it. But anyway, uh, I think that's part of the big issue on that on that bill. Uh, we'll be, I think we'll be called back up there if, if they can uh, come to some kind of agreement between leadership of the House and the Senate and the governor. So, uh, again, it's not happened yet, but, uh, you know, we really need to find a way to, to help these people in these agencies. I have a little different view on, on the pension <coughs> crisis and, and uh, some of the things that have been said. We went from being really uh, liberal on our contribution rates to really, really conservative, and I think there's a middle ground there. Uh, we were using things as like... Uh, 5% payroll growth. Well, our payroll in the state of Kentucky is not growing 5%. Uh, percent. As you all know, there have been state employees. You, you've not had raises in several, several years. So your payroll growth is, is not growing. So that, that was too, uh, too uh, low of a payment or whatever. But uh, I think there needs to be a middle ground. You know, going from 40-something percent to 80-something percent for these agencies is too much. They can't handle it. They can't afford it, and that's that's why you're hearing uh, uh, the issues that we have on these agencies. The pension crisis does have to be fixed. I mean, you all read about it over and over and over. Uh, I filed a bill last session, House Bill 504, that uh, dealt with teacher retirement system, and it, it saved $560 million over the next 20 years versus the plan that we have, and it kept teachers in a defined benefit, which is very important because they don't draw Social Security. So that's that's another issue that I, uh, when I talk to people, they say, well, you know, you don't draw Social Security? No, we don't pay in, nor do we draw. But the worst part of that is if, if a teacher's married, you know, their spouse draws Social Security. If their spouse dies, they can't draw that Social Security either. So one of the things that was talked about, and, and I tell people this all the time, you know, and you hear this, well, why not put new teachers into Social Security and then, a, then the 401 and that would work. It would work. But the problem with that is that that is more expensive to the state because the, the matching part for Social Security is more than they match on our, on our pensions now. So there's not any easy fix to this, but there's going to have to uh, 
be some agreement amongst the parties on on how to fix it. And again, the big hang up from a lot of the Republicans is they don't want uh, people in defined benefits. They want everybody in a 401 type like business uh, has. And so that's that's the problem right there. You know, we can't come to agreement on what, what our pension systems are going to look like. Uh, there have been 19,000 something employees leave the Kentucky retirement system just the Kentucky retirement system in the last five years. That's people that were hired and then left for whatever reasons. And, you know, part of the reasons that they're leaving is to pay and the, and the benefits have been reduced uh, such that they can make more in the private sector. Here in, in our uh, teaching, here in Ohio County, in the last two or three years, we're start, starting to see a shortage. We have positions at the high school and middle school that are really hard to fill right now. It's going on all, all throughout the state. And I think, like I said, within the next five years, unless we, we do fix these uh, pension systems and, and the pay for teachers and state employees, we're really going to see, we are going to see a, a major crisis. Uh, the session was short, again, 30 days. We, I think we passed a lot of good bills. Uh, you know, if, if you're pro-life, we passed a lot of pro-life bills. And people say, well, you all pass them, but you know that they're going to get overturned or whatever. Well, we don't know that. The courts are becoming more conservative. So, we, you know, we, we really don't know if, if those are going to stand up or not. We hope they do. Uh, and we're a pro-life state, I think. I think for most most part, especially here in Ohio County, you know, we value life and we value, uh, we don't want things that are going on in New York and other places uh, to happen here. So those are some good things. There was a lot of tax, uh, tax bill cleanups that were, uh, I guess, in the rush last session or whatever that were, that came into play for nonprofits. Uh, most of those have been cleaned up where nonprofits aren't going to be taxed like, like uh, I think the revenue cabinet interpreted and uh, so we're proud to do that. Uh, I think I'll open the floor up now. What I like to do, if you have any specific questions or, or any issues that you want me to take back to Frankfurt. Uh, I was lucky. I, the secretary that I have, we have two. We have five people in our office. And the two secretaries that, that we have have been there a while. And so if I give her something, she knows exactly who to talk to and who to get the answer. So. I've had several people from Ohio County call me and say, can you help me uh, on this issue? And I'm, boy, I give it to them and they know exactly who to call them within that day, usually I have an answer for them. So if you ever have anything like that, you know, I work for you all. You are the ones that elected me. And when I, when I vote on issues, that's how I try to vote. I try to vote on how I think the people of Ohio County and East Davis County would want me to vote. And uh, that's, that's what I do. And sometimes I, you know, quite frankly, I vote against my party sometimes. And that's not an easy thing to do, you know. When you got you got Republicans looking at you, and you're one of three out of 61 that voted against something that sort of raised some eyebrows. But you know, I don't think you all elected me to go up there and just fall in line. You elected me to represent you all and vote the way that I feel, and that's that's the way I'm going to continue doing it. Anybody have any questions at this time? Yes. House Bill 58. I know. Uh, talk to you about that more than once our group talked to you about that when we were in Frankfurt with you um, passed the house didn't get heard in the Senate people filed their taxes yesterday and they a lot of people they don't realize in February what a burden that was going to be they're going to get less money back or they're going to have to pay what do you see as the future with that um, House Bill 58 is one that I co-sponsored actually mm -hmm. and uh, had to do with retirement benefits for state employees and teachers and uh, it actually uh, reduced the rate used to pay taxes on anything over forty one thousand dollars for your state uh, income tax and it was lower to thirty one and uh, it was said that that was done in a mistake toward the end last year and that they would clean it up this session well I knew it was in trouble when they didn't bring it up in the House Committee for a long, you know, in the committee that was in for a long time. And it was finally, there was enough of us that qu kept talking about that bill to at least get it to a vote on the floor, and it did, and it passed. I don't know that we had anybody vote against it. I think most every uh, bipartisan Democrats and Republicans voted for that. Uh, quite frankly, you know, I think the Senate is where the issue is, and the, and the Senate 
uh, didn't want to take that issue up and didn't want to change it. So for whatever reason, I think, you know, on the next session, the problem is not in the House on that bill, it's in the Senate. So if you want to lobby or, or talk to anyone, it needs to get some traction in the Senate because in the House will support that. And again, it was, it was, it's always been like that. And it was in error last year that it, it was changed. And then I think maybe the Senate feels like since it was changed, they're not willing to change it back. But that's, you know, I've learned a lot of things too over the year and I've, I've got my feet wet a lot. And leadership controls more than what I thought. Uh, they decide if your bill gets heard. They decide if your bill even gets heard in committee. House Bill 504, the pension bill, you know, I was encouraged to uh, file it because, you know, one of the things we've heard as state employees and educators uh, as I was running for the, for the position was, well, you always want to write, but you don't have any solutions. Well, this time we had a solution. We, you know, when we filed that bill, we had every group involved around the table and, and we met it to teach a retirement system. So, KEA, uh, the retirement group for superintendents, pr uh, principals, state employees, retired uh, employees association, all of us were around the table for two weeks and we wrote that bill. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't great for public employees or teachers, but it was something that both sides could could live with. And I, I think that's the kind of cooperation it's going to take to get pension reform done. And uh, But again, the bill wasn't even heard in, uh, it wasn't even assigned to a, to a committee. So um, I'm deciding right now if we're going to pre-file that bill for the next session uh, with some changes. And, uh, you know, we do, we, we have to stop the bleeding of the pension systems. And that bill did that. The, the problem that some of the Republicans in the leadership has, has with that bill is it didn't affect current employees or retirees. It only affected new hires going forward. And, you know, quite honestly, I think that's, that's important to me and people in the education profession is that we, we don't punish our people that have always paid their payments and, and signed a contract that they were going to get X amount of benefits uh, I think we need to protect those people and then for new ones coming in, they'll know what they're getting. They still have a retirement, and, and, but it'll, be, it'll look a little different than, than what we currently have. So until we get these issues, these type of issues, they're going to dominate every session. And uh, the 60-day session, I expect that there will be a lot of pension reform uh, activity. And it, it's going to be a tough budget year. You know, Mr. Southern, you know, you know our budget and you know some of the things that we not been funded for our transportation. You know, we, you all know how what our county's like. It's the fifth largest in the state, I think, and uh, I can't remember how many miles each day we travel. But we, you know, the state's supposed to fund that at around 100%. We get we get about 59% funding on that, which in this district costs us a lot of money. Uh, we've had no textbook money. We've had. You know, no professional development money, meaning training for teachers. Uh, so some of those things, we've not had those in years. And uh, when you talk to the general public, they, they look at you when you tell them you don't, you've not had any textbook money, and they're like, hmm, fun textbooks? You know, but it's true. I mean, it's through, true all across the state. And it's just a tough time. It's a tough time. And I, you know, I think we do well here in Ohio County and some other rural districts and handle our money we we've always tried to keep taxes low uh, we've taken the four percent very few times in my tenure I don't know that we've ever taken uh, four percent that you can take each year increase we always take the same amount of money we take the compensating rate it's the same amount of money as we've got the year before so you know I'm not for raising taxes and I don't, I don't think anyone uh, especially the Republican Party in Frankfurt's for raising taxes but it with that said, then we've got to find we've got to find ways to gather more general fund money. Uh, I think there's two billion more uh, deductions than there is revenue coming into the state of Kentucky for the general fund. And I'm not saying all those are bad, but I've always said I thought we needed to do tax reform first, and then we would see where we are on all these other issues. And uh, you know we've done a little bit of that. I just don't know <coughs> we've done enough. And uh, I think there will be more tax reform coming in the next uh, two or three years. So, anybody have any other questions?
I hope that's given you an oversight. It's hard to it's hard to uh, pick particular bills out. But again, you if you followed the the legislative session uh, at all or read the papers, you you all know that uh, you know the pitching thing is looming out there, and you know you're always getting it'll go two or three months and you won't hear anything, and then here it comes back, and it's it's coming back with House Bill 358. I just really think that we, instead of encouraging these people to get out of the system, these quasi agencies and so forth, we need to come up with a way for them to stay in the system. So that we've got people paying into the system and, and more money coming in than, than we've got coming out. So again, I want anybody that, if you're connected to any of the universities or not, and most of them know, I've told them why I voted no on that bill. It didn't have anything to do with trying to help them. But I really think it was illegal for the employees. And, and I think when the governor and his staff started looking at that, I think they realized that also. So, yes. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Uh, two of them had to reach out to you, and I certainly appreciate being returned very quickly with a phone call and helping me on the situation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Nobody has any questions. That's all I have. Again, I appreciate you all. I'm glad you allowed me to come and, and speak. Uh, I'll be at the Board of Education until June 30th. I now do what Seth Souther tells me to do every day. He, you know, he gives me a list, and it's sort of nice being that number two person. I didn't, I don't know. I may, if I could take my retirement back, I may. <laughs> but no, no. I see he'll do a great job, Seth Souther. I don't know you all know he's been uh, selected as superintendent here in Ohio County, and we have a very good school district and uh, some great schools, and, and it's because of the people that work in our district is what makes us so special, I think. It allows us to do the extra things that we do for kids. Thank you all. Okay, that, includes, that concludes today's meeting. Uh, we will meet back here on Tuesday, May the 21st, and hope everyone has a great week. And uh, is there any other things that needs to be discussed before we adjourn? All right. Have a great day. Thank you.